lost my sex drive. My husband came home from the war and found me sleeping with a woman. We took her away. They ran off together. My baby died. I got my sex drive back and had another baby. I married a man who brought with him two children of his own. He loved them dearly. He stayed home to care for them. I went out each day to make money, but found I hated my job. I quit. The man who gave me the job threatened to kill me if I left. He didn't kill me. I got another job. I fell in love. The person I loved did not love me. He told me to get lost. I threatened to kill him if he went out with other women. He did. I shot him. He recovered and soon came back to me, begging my forgiveness. I couldn't love him anymore. I quit my job. We moved into a larger house and the children at the school. I spent the days cleaning the house and decorating. In the evenings, we had small dinner parties. My husband decided to get a job. Another war broke out. We had to open our house to strangers who stole our things. Oh, my husband fell in love with one of them and left me with the children. When he returned a few months later, he had lost the ability to speak. He listened to the radio. He played the children. I think it worked in the hospital but I went to my first brain. Didn't expect him to live. His memory was shot. He couldn't recognize me. He recovered, but soon after died of school. He had become obese. I contracted a mysterious ailment which had picked up in my left side. It was entirely good, but the problem from the babies implanted in the skin. I exuded a peculiar odor and frequently urinated and vomited. The doctors went back to see me. They could do nothing. I took a room in the house and found a moment for my stay. They were courageous, of course. Involved in their own life. One day the mask fell off. I found myself at the last night in my sending machine. I saw the shoes moving my clothing in his eyes and the ball. Tiny marks got me. I had tripped my phone and he refused to have me back and help to take care of my life. I just got nearly blind but did a wonderful job. In spite of my head.
I have lived now three years beyond him, opening the door to admit the boy from the store. Otherwise, I rarely move from this chair. In summer, I move the chair out to the porch. My children call, but they don't visit anymore. They are always reprimanding me for the way I have chosen to live. They complain that I should go out more and that I'm neglecting my personal hygiene. I'm happy, though, doing exactly what I want. Fortunately, I don't remember much of what I have suffered. I know I experienced those things, but I can't control them up with any veracity. But the pleasures I can recall vividly, the pleasant sensations, I go through them all systematically, keeping records of what I believe. I can recall the dresses women wore to my parties, the sounds men made when we were making love. I can recall the number and quality of the compliments I received on different occasions. And the years with my children, I can recall how their voices sounded in the night, my husband's many games with them, the configuration of the hair on his chest, his legs and belly. I can recall the patterns of the rugs of the different fine homes we visited over the years. I'm certain my memory of these things is better than anything I could experience today.
I will first apologize for not being present in person at this luncheon. But, as you are aware, the circumstances prevented me from being with you. By the time this speech is reproduced, however, I
Brasília, que é a ilha do Papel no Cu.
much. Uh, we'd like to invite you for a free drink at the bar. If you want to know more, sorry, know more about technology, we have an open day on Saturday, and then you are invited not to come in through our back hall, but to uh, come in through the front door, which has a marble opening. So you can see both sides of Spain. That's on Saturday from 11 o'clock until later. And you're welcome to drink if you like. It's free. Thank you.